Okay, thank you, Sir Renzo, Luca. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to it's the first talk, so I'm going to introduce a little bit about the, about the, what we are doing in the animal study. Uh, my talk is going to be a three part. First one is uh, uh, like uh, we have a lot of different fMRI contrast. We are going to compare the different contrast, which is going to be best for the uh, layer specific fMRI research there. And uh, this is a cumulative probably my, uh, my lab did like last 10 years or so, um, almost like last 20 years or so. Then we are working on the neural source of a layer specific fMRI signal. That's what I'm going to talk about probably is the next uh, uh, neural core rate of the fMRI signal. Then last thing is uh, uh, you all working on the human fMRI. So I know you do all the basal fMRI study there. So we are trying to compare with uh, any more my own fMRI with the basal. So I start uh, layer fMRI almost uh, two decades ago. You can see this uh, uh, 2000, 2000, this Tim Duang. Uh, he did uh, one of our first experiment in uh, our lab there. And uh, what is doing this one, this uh, red, uh, to the somatosensory stimulation. So we are looking for primary somatosensory cortical area. So we inject the manganese ion. So we look at the manganese ion accumulation during the stimulation. So this is uh, considered calcium activity related to the synaptic activity. You can see middle of a cortical area, there is a highest activity coming out there. Then we also do the CBF study with the ASL. Again, you see the middle of a cortical area, highest activity. And board, we all know surface cortex, we have a highest activity. So this is a considered by the first uh, layer fMRI study. Then we developed a uh, cat uh, visual stimulation model in our laboratory there. So we actually spent a lot of time looking for a layer in the cat visual cortical area. So this is essentially is a bold fMRI study, and I showed probably multiple times this one. So this is area is a CSFF, and then this is a white matter area. And uh, during the stimulation, you see that a lot of activity at the surface cortex in there. As you know, this old training, training problem. And when you inject the myon, so myon is an ion contrast agent, and this is a, uh, making CBB with uh, contrast. You can see highest activity now middle of cortex. This is a negative change. So you can see this is the same animal. You can see huge change between the board and the CBB uh, fMRI. So we can look at the, this one as a more detailed is a cortical layer profile there. So we can look at this one board fMRI. You can see this uh, cortical depth and the layer two, three, layer four, layer five, six. And uh, when you use a gradient echo, spin echo, you can see the activity like this one. Spin echo, supposed to be better, you know, actually better, but it's, uh, you can see still is quite broad in the sense. And when you do the myon study, when you use the gradient echo measurement and you do spin echo measurement, you can see both see the very sharp uh, tuning into layer four. This is where is the input layer. So you can see the map you show exactly where is the high activity there. So next question you can see, this is a static image we average for a long time, like 40, 40 seconds or so. So we would like to see whether time depend response. So this is a tower gene to the experiment and we compare the gradient network board, CBB, this with the myon, CBF, this ASL study. Then we look at the 46 second time, then we can see this time one, first four second map, gradient echo. This you, you can see there is a more highest activity at the middle cortex that this contour show you uh, middle cortical layer. And then lay on surface cortex, you have a hot spot there. And the CBB initially is not very well localized in layer four. But when you go to a later time point, there is a much well localized middle cortex. You can see there is a time dependence there. So right slide show you, panel show you, where is it actually is a cortical profile. So I'm going to show you again this one, so you can just pay attention to this slide. And the CBF is a well localized at middle cortex. CBB is more well tuned to the CBF. Difference between CBF and CBB is actually a little bit clear there. CBB is more tuned to layer four compared to CBF. You know, gradient echo, just like this one. 
So when we look at the, this one again, this is a, just a re scaling the sun, gradient echo board. You can see all this surface is highest one. It's going down here. And the CBB, initially, there is a less localized. There's a middle cortical area, surface cortex, very similar response. Later on, they are peak at the middle cortex. And the CBF, there is a very broad response at the peaking at the layer four. So one of the question is already coming down there. What is the source of this early less tuned response in this time point? So we have to dissect CBB response in the arterial versus venous uh, CBB. So we develop arterial CBB measurement technique. This is using the bold fMRI with a varying magnetization transfer effect. So magnetization transfer effect is changing arterial and the tissue contribution differently. So we can actually estimate the arterial blood volume. So this is a, a map you're showing this uh, board as well as this one. Then arterial blood volume type profile here. You can see layer four here, there is a highest response, but early time point is you can see less localized to the layer four. So this is show you, you can actually look at the arterial versus venous uh, blood volume change as a function of the depth there. Then this is a total blood volume. We measure total blood volume with the myon. Arterial blood volume with the bold with empty fat. Venous blood volume, we uh, basically uh, calculate from total blood volume and arterial blood volume. Okay, and then we can, this is a time point, different time point here. We have profile of this uh, uh, cortical layer profile here, and this again layer four. Total CBB, arterial CBA is uh, quite well localized as a layer four, but venous, there is a relatively not lo well lo localized at all. So we, I combined this uh, observation together. As you can see the bold response at peak at the surface cortex. Everybody knows about this one. CBF response peak at the middle of the cortex. This is uh, where actually most activity coming out the capillary area. Early CBB response, less lamina specific, possibly due to penetrating arterial contribution. So you can see there is a no uh, lamina specific to this one. Later time point, there is an activity in the probably uh, small vessel, then there is a very well localized in the layer four. So now we know CBB is a quite specific to layer four. So we would like to know about the, what the ural source of the layer specific fMRI. And the, we first we use a wet olfactory bulb uh, model system there. Why do we use a red olfactory bulb model? This is a, it's a, a cortical area. The circuit is very complex. It's very difficult to dissect uh, the information there. So it's a red olfactory bulb model, relatively simple. And the layer can be identified by the MRI. You can see this MRI images. You can see the conscious there. Uh, each layer has a unique uh, neurophysiological function. You can have a certain layer, only there is synaptic activity, certain layer only have a spiking activity. So we can actually see where is the fMRI signal occurs there. And we can also modulate the layer specific activity, uh, layer specific activity. So this is a unique uh, model system we can actually utilize for the neurophysical coupling research. So I'm going to give you about a little bit about circuit system here, what it looks like. And uh, this is a quite a simple uh, circuit uh, diagram here. This is a depth information. And uh, this is a different layers here. So you can see layer one, two, three, four, six, like that one. And uh, this is a glomerular layer. And when animal smell it, then synapse released in the glomerular layer and then binding in this layer, then this information carried to the mature cell layer, this excited cell here, then spikes, then signal going to the cortical area. So animal smell it, then we expect to have the highest response, glomerular layer, this is the most outer layer in this area, and this is what the selective activity there, 
and this is what the spiking activity is there. So we can stimulate to lateral olfactory tract. This is a, where is a brain a signal going to the, in the brain here. Then when you stimulate here, then antidromically we stimulate these mitral cells. Then it leads the synapse in this EPL layer. This is an external plexiform layer here. And then this synapse bind into the, this layer, then spike at the glenular cell layer. So this is what the circuit there. So first synaptic layer is going to be is a EPL layer. So you can actually shift to the little bit of the middle layer here. Then when you stimulate anterior commissioner here, this is a feedback circuit we stimulate. This is stimulate here, then leads the here, then granular cell layer, this is an inhibitory cells. They are bind this uh, synapse, then spikes, then leads the synapses here. So this is the first synaptic activity occur and uh, is a GCL uh, granular cell layer. So we can actually modulate different layer by its uh, stimulation, and we want to see whether this activity actually indeed change like this one. First, we want to make sure we can stimulate the ROT and the AC stimulation. We know there is activity actually occur to the EPA layer or GCA layers. So this is uh, to the testing. We did a local field potential measurement in the olfactory bulb here. And then we insert electrode lateral olfactory tract and also entry commissioner there. We stimulate, we actually measure LFP. And then we know what's going on, which layers activity there. So we measure different depths and then we calculate called the current source density. This will show you where is the uh, uh, signal coming in here. This ROT stimulation, this is what you do. And we're supposed to activate a middle, critical, middle layer this is an EPL layer. You can see this uh, uh, blue color show you where is a sink called the sink. There is a first signal coming in this layer. When you do the AC stimulation, this is a uh, anterior commissioner. They're supposed to activate the GCA layer. You can see it's, uh, there's a blue color coming on this layer. Then this activity is actually shipped to different layers. So then after stimulation, we uh, did the histology, we confirmed where is a, uh, it's a, a stimulation site. We know this is a actually stimulation is correct there. This old experiment started is uh, Alex Paprosky. He uh, was a uh, postdoc when I was in uh, uh, Pittsburgh there, and uh, we actually carried out the ephemera experiment. So experiment is essentially three experiments. One is order stimulation, LOT, microstimulation, AC microstimulation, we acquire board after injection of the country agent, we actually acquire CBB images there, and this uh, group uh, images there. So you can see it here, and uh, just uh, concentrate CBB. So board is uh, not terribly interesting there. CBB response, you have other stimulation, you see the activity is outside of this is a contour. Contour is with the EPL layers. Then you do the ROT stimulation, you can see the activity follow the EPL layers. That's where the contour is there. Then AC stimulation, you see the activity shifting to the more like a middle cortex. So it's a bilateral. So we look at the cortical profiles. This is a depth information and this is intensity. And uh, when you do the bold stimulation, bold signal is regardless of whatever stimulation, there is a highest activity coming out the GL layer. And uh, uh, th this is uh, pretty much, you can see there is no specificity in there. When you, in the CBB study, when you do the order stimulation, you do the highest activity in the GL layer, this outer layer, then ROT stimulation is shifted to the middle layer, ROT EPL layer, then you do the uh, it's an AC stim uh, anterior commission stimulation shift to GCL layer. So fMRI response, peak response, shift to the first synaptic activity layer. So it's, uh, this is uh, something like expected to the certain layer and uh, this uh, follow exactly what the expectation. So next uh, question we have it there. Okay, CBB response is so quite specific to the uh, specific layer. 
and we would like to know what is exactly point spread of the CBB response. This is again Alex Paprosky performed the experiment. We did experiment uh, e, uh, acti uh, ROT stimulation. We activate EPL layer. We know it's the EPL layer. Where is exactly this EPL layer here? And we uh, did experiment in the 55 micron implant resolution fMRI, and we also use 110 micron implant resolution. Then we look at the profile of this area. Okay, so we look at the profile here, and then we actually uh, look at the uh, cortical profile. This is a, a response function here. This is the area is a EPL layer. Where is it? The layer is there. Then you can see there are two different is a, is a resolution, response peak. So we estimate actual physical distance in this EPL layer. This is what the X axis uh, uh, thickness of the EPL layer. Then we measure full width hyper maxima of this uh, two different uh, uh, so resolution response there. This is a 110 micron response. This is a 55 micron response in the full width hyper maxima. So we fit this data set, then we actually got a function coming down there. Intercept consider to be the point spread. So intercept is 110 micron, this is about 240 microns, and the 55 micron is end up to the 100, about 100 micron. So what we, uh, based on this data set, we can conclude is a hemodynamic response about the plus minus 50 micron spread beyond the active side. So that means hemodynamic response, or in this case, CBV response, are quite specific and uh, more likely lead to the capillary response. Then obviously we are not trying to this study, and uh, we are not applied to the actual is uh, animal research there. And uh, after I came back to the Korea, we are uh, doing a lot of mouse fMRI. And uh, this is uh, one of the study what we are doing. So when we do mouse uh, somatic sensory stimulation, there is a lot of uh, somatic sensory networks active during the stimulation there. And we want to know how their response, whether response is a salomon cortical input or cortical cortical input. And I think uh, most of you are interested to look at uh, those uh, ideas. So we did uh, fMRI study after injection of the myon. This is a 15.2 Tesla uh, scanner here. And uh, this one is actually fMRI maps. You can see the here, this is a, uh, where is a primary uh, sensory cortical area, podium area. And uh, this is a more area here. Then this is a secondary uh, sensory cortical area. Then this is a more likely salami nuclei. So we can just uh, focusing on this uh, cortical area activity there. In order to look at the layer information, we actually linearize this uh, uh, area like, uh, like this. So you can see this uh, basically here, flattering, cortical flattering here, this M1 area, this S1, S2 area, this is actually functional map. So you can see there is a S1 area, there's S1 folding area, there's highest response, is a shifting more like a middle, and M1 area, you can see more surface, like uh, this is a more area 2, 3. S2 area also, you can see the little bit more surface here. This is uh, more like a uh, layer 2, 3 here. And we can look at the cortical flow parts. This is a uh, surface to the deep. So it's a uh, cortical thickness about a millimeter in the mouse. And uh, this is a uh, 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 x-axis uh, signal uh, response here. S1 area, you can see highest response is right on here about this is layer four. And uh, this M1 area and S2 area, they all will be shallow. This is uh, more like a layer two, three. So we can conclude from this one, S1, they get a signal from salam cortical projection input there. And M1 or S2, they are received uh, many cortical cortical inputs. So based on, uh, so far, what uh, we are studying here, neural activity is spread across layer very quickly. I think that this is uh, going to talk the later on there. But what we saw, there's a first snapped input layer show the highest CVV response. And I don't know what the reason there, but that's what we observed. And the uh, early response is not a specific, but late CVV response is uh, very specific. 
there is about 100 micrometer special spread. And this can be used for the circuit level analysis. So last piece I'm going to talk essentially is, okay, we have this old animal study, we inject myon, and myon is uh, looking for is a uh, uh, blood value in the, is a plasma blood volume there. Is the question is how is it relevant to the vessel fMRI study? And some of the people you are thinking about, well, maybe spin echo board. Spin echo board is very good. And this is a maybe way to do a so layer fMRI. So we basically want to compare to the myon study versus the vessel versus the microvascular spin echo board fMRI. Okay, this is a, is a Taojin, so I did the experiment. This is published like 2008 there. We actually do have a, it's a same animal. We do the three experiment. One is a myon study, and this is a vessel study, then spinnacle ball study. So you can see this all the T value. Uh, first thing is what you notice is, uh, this is a layer four in this cell. Okay, high cell activity is a, this arrow would indicate where the layer four is there. Is a CBB and the vessel, they are same like a position there. And then spinnaker board is more broad, as we all know about there. But as you look at this one, this is a basically have a, like a, where the, it's a T value. T value essentially is a vessel in the spinnaker, spinnaker higher T value than vessel one. So this uh, one show you cortical profile, and this is a percent change here. And this is a depth information here. So you can see this uh, layer four is around here and uh, is a vessel and also contrast agent. There is a negative signal change. You can see the, this is a contrast agent. There is a peak at the layer four and also vessel has a very similar property, a little bit, you know, wider than is a contrast agent, but they are similar. Uh, then bold, there is a, they are very broad. There is not really has any peak in the, around here. And the right uh, panel show you time course. You can see it here, it's a contrast agent and the vessel, they are all go together. You can see that you are indistinguishable. They are like, they all go together. And the spin echo, you can see a post stimulus undershoot, but this both is a vessel and the contrast agents, you don't see any is a, is a post stimulus undershoot. So I wanna conclude all the, my so finding together and the hemodynamic response is a relatively CBF, CBB are relatively specific uh, in the lamina scale. Uh, layer specific microvessel uh, response must be included in the capillary. And uh, this later time point is uh, more dilate and uh, maybe like about 10 seconds. I don't know exactly what the time there. And uh, I don't have any evidence what exactly what is happening in the, all of this one. So since I don't have any microscopic measurement there. Then based on what we have it, increased synaptic activity is responsible to hemodynamic response. And another spiking activity and the so synaptic activity, one of the key things. And we see there is a first synaptic input layer has a most responding and uh, it's not clear why so we don't see and the second third synaptic layer is not a uh, very obvious. And the spinnaker board FMR is uh, less specific to active layer uh, compared to CBF or CBB. And the reason they still have to investigate, they can be due to really have a oxygenation level properties. And uh, another thing is we all do the EPI. This uh, T2 star contribution during the EPI, there is another possibility. And the last thing is I actually wanna got a comment back from you guys here. And uh, I do a lot of animal study. I would like to know what will be the critical animal study for human or like fMRI community, specifically layer related to the issues there. And uh, obviously, so I didn't do the much experiment and uh, people did all the experiment by others here. It's a Won Bum Jung, he's, uh, he just graduated and he's a postdoc now. Uh, he did uh, his uh, mouse fMRI study at, uh, uh, in Korea. And uh, most of my uh, works are uh, done at the uh, University of Pittsburgh. There's Alex Paprowski and Hiro Fukuta, they do the all factory bulb study. And the Tao Jin, uh, Tekin, Fu Chang Zhao, and they did uh, all the layer uh, fMRI study in the using the CBF, CBB, and, uh, and attribute value. Uh, thank you for your attention.